Oh, yes. Hello once again, everyone. Today I've got a review for War for Cybertron Siege Deluxe Class Mirage in a crushed box. That's right, it's a special review, where my Mirage comes in a special edition crushed box. Thank you, Amazon. Really appreciate you guys mailing my things in bubble mailers. Please stop. Anywho, Mirage is the final deluxe I'll be reviewing for this current wave, and he's one of three new deluxe toys alongside Impactor and Barricade. Mirage is an Autobot that hasn't seen too many retail releases for his toys, and you know, current age of classics and generations and all that. He had a classics toy, he had a Combiner Wars toy that was uh, not the best attempt, it was really just drag strip with a new head. So now after people have been clamoring for a you know very G1 accurate Mirage toy, they finally delivered. And this thing looks awesome. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. It just looks great. For those wondering, he is uh, Siege number 43. So, yeah, we're really starting to climb that ladder. And he is one of the fan vote characters alongside Impactor. So he is called out as such here. On the side here, let's see, just a shot of him charging into battle. Looking very uncharacteristically angry. Mirage is usually more uh, aloof and kind of concerned with himself, but... Yeah, okay, it works. It looks cool. On the back, you have his two modes. It takes 19 steps to transform him. You got your Battlemaster cross cells here. And then, of course, on this side, you have a crushed image, Amazon, of the typical War for Cybertron, Siege, you know, promotional art. All right, and here are the instructions for Mirage with this nice big wrinkle at the top. Amazon. Thank you for that. But, you know, it's got the very neutral render of him right there. Serial number, siege number 43. And then the front bit is just transformation to his vehicle mode, along with the recommended weapon storage there. You got cross cells, compatibilities, and then yet again, just like his, uh, his two wave mates, Impactor and Barricade, his weapons are listed in uh, uh, Autobot Alphabet. Now this time, I planned ahead and I actually went and translated these for you guys. So this gun right here is normal handheld weapon. It's called an Electro Disruptor Cannon. That's what that comes out to. And then this one here that he normally has on his shoulder is called the Armor Piercing Rocket Dart Launcher. Rocket Dart's like one word. It's really weird. So, yeah, those are, you know, his, basically his classic weapons he's always had. Uh, and something, I haven't touched on this, but I've noticed that with recent Siege toys, they seem to have stopped advertising the whole modular nature of their weapons. You know, in the first few waves, they would have their standard weapons, and then you would have, like, typically at least one combined form with their weapons. And they seem to have moved away from that toward the tail end. I don't know why that is specifically. Uh, I know personally, I, I usually found the combined weapons to be kind of garbage and silly looking. So maybe they just decided it wasn't worth it. Though these weapons still are module. You know, they still have, or sorry, modular. They, they still have their, um, you know, little five mil ports and posts all over. So you can still do stuff with them. But yeah, they just don't really advertise it anymore. And they also make it really hard to know what these are even called because they went and switched all to Autobot Alphabet, which I guess the point of that is so that you keep using their website. But I guess this is just the new norm. And here we have Mirage's vehicle mode. And it is a Cybertronian car, but it is made to very much evoke his classic, you know, Formula One racer type vehicle that he turns into. It's got your optional weapon storage here on the spoiler. Makes him look pretty well armed. Of course, you could always remove him if you want a cleaner vehicle mode. And yeah, overall, this looks very good. Looks very solid. Uh, you can see this portion right here is done up in a translucent plastic. And uh, I'm not really sure why. I guess it's just to hammer home the par uh, the point that he's a Cybertronian vehicle. May also be an allusion to his ability to go invisible and stuff. Though they went and 
you know, are about to release a version that's fully translucent blue, so I'm not really sure why they went this direction, but okay. Uh, overall, this looks very good. The wheels are nice looking, though you can still see the little pegs in the middle, but I like that they're painted and that they have these really cool pronounced like spokes on them. Uh, underside kibble's not too bad. The only thing I don't like about this is right here. It's his robot chest, which is designed to look like a uh, deformed version of his vehicle front, because the original Mirage toy, the front of his vehicle became his chest. Here, to make him a little more uh, proportioned and cartoon accurate, they opted for this faux chest, which bugs me enough as it is. I don't like when they cheat the transformation for a toy, at least not to such a large degree. But now you just basically have a modified front end on his back end. So it's weird. Uh, luckily, it's rounded looking enough to where it's not super, super obvious. But anyway, it's, you know, it's got this whole same bit right here. So I don't know. It's like the one thing that kind of hurts the vehicle mode, in my opinion. Everything else is great. Uh, for the most part, it rolls well, except on my copy, this front wheel right here kind of sticks. Might be able to hear that clicking sound. It, it gets caught on one point, so it doesn't want to roll on its own. Uh, might do better with some traction, but it kind of just gets stuck like right there. Yeah. Here we've got Mirage with the most recent two uh, attempts at creating like a, a G1 Mirage toy outside of, you know, G1. And specifically, these are the Combiner Wars Mirage and the Classics Mirage. Uh, Classics Mirage is a very popular mold. A lot of people really like that one, myself included. Now, Classics is supposed to be kind of a uh, reinterpretation of the characters. You know, basically like new forms for them based on more modern vehicle modes. So they tend to carry a different aesthetic and don't always match up the same, you know, silhouette and everything that their original Generation 1 counterpart had. But for what it is, it's a very good toy. Combiner Wars, on the other hand, is just straight up a new head retool of Drag Strip. So that it fit with the, you know, Combiner Wars gimmick and could turn into an armor leg for a combiner. And as such is not a great looking Mirage toy. I mean, the vehicle mode looks fine, but once we transform these guys to robot mode, you're gonna see just how lacking that is. And, you know, it's a good example of how much we needed a modern update of the Mirage character. All right, we're gonna transform this guy now. And his transformation is really interesting, very unique, especially the way the legs work, which I like. I already expressed the fact that I'm annoyed that they cheated the transformation, but you know, that aside, th this is a really well-designed toy. So the first thing you're doing, you're gonna kind of remove this back part here, and it plugs in a few different places. There, uh, there, in here so you know it's in there pretty well now you just kind of extend that out I'm gonna separate these from his legs so what you're gonna do while well, you keep his legs spread wide you take the axles right here and just flip them around bring these outer shell bits down like so and then these are his feet right here so you're gonna straighten them out make sure you have the clearance there to do that so yeah, same thing here I'm just gonna Flip it around, pull this part down, if it'll come off, there you go. And kind of a thin little piece of plastic there, so just be careful, don't stress it too much. Uh, go ahead and flip the foot, make sure it all kind of stays together. Yeah, sorry, Ooh, flip them around, Gotta straighten these out, like so. So you got his legs. And then to finish off his upper half here, you are going to Flip his head out, bring these wheels in all the way, and then you're going to separate these arms like that. Swing them down, fold in these shoulder panels. Alright, we're going to swing all this down, it just kind of snaps into place there, flip his fists out, and then just, you know, Pose them accordingly. However you want to do it. Get your ankle tilt going, all that stuff. And this is uh, just the basic robot mode, and it looks 
very spot on to Mirage's character model and everything. I mean, this is by far the most G1 accurate toy or G1 cartoon accurate toy we've ever received of Mirage, which is really cool. Uh, the chest looks great, despite being a faux chest. You know, I see why they did it. It does look very nice. It's got some hard points, you know, right there on his shoulders. I think that's about it. So kind of lacking on the hard points a little bit. It's got his classic little panels on his upper arms, though they are on a hinge, so you can swing them up. Maybe even like big old shoulder pads might help connecting weaponizers, you know. Very cool. Um, it's got your typical articulation, so hinge and swivel for shoulders, bicep swivel, single elbow joint. Got full waist swivel with some kind of soft rest for his neutral position. Um, hinge and swivel for the hips. Knee bend. He does. Well, yeah, he does have a thigh swivel. It's just located way up there, so kind of the whole thing turns, which is fine. I actually, kind of prefer it that way. And then of course he's got ankle rocking and tilting. So you got all of that goodness. And then his head is on a very tight ball joint, so it can look around a little bit turn full 360. All right, and to really complete Mirage's silhouette, you gotta attach his weapons. So this one, the armor-piercing rocket dart launcher, you can put on his shoulder here. You can do either one, but normally it goes right here. Uh, plugs in all the way, and then his just handheld gun, you just put in one of his hands. And now he really, really looks like the classic Generation 1 Mirage toy. Not to be confused with classics Mirage. And yeah, I mean, this is the default configuration. You can do whatever you want. You have him hold this thing in his hand. This rocket part here does come out and it does have a little handle on the bottom. So it can act as like a smaller gun if you wanted to, or, you know, it can be inserted into other cannon type things as ammunition. And uh, yeah, overall, he just, he's simple, but he just looks amazing. And this has got to be one of the most visually appealing Siege Deluxes that, you know, I've come across personally. So very, very cool. All right, here we have the other two Mirages again, just so you can see how they compare. And they all look very radically different. You know, Classics Mirage is very hyper stylized, very anime looking robot, um, which I, I always found him very cool. You know, as a reinvention of the character, I just thought he was so unique. He's very tall, very spindly. Definitely looks like something off of a sci-fi movie, but I love him. This Mirage, I think, is garbage. <laughs> like, the drag strip mold is one of my least favorites from Combiner Wars, as it is. Right up there alongside, like, the uh, breakdown mold. Not a fan of that either. Uh, and so all of its weaknesses carry over to this Mirage. Um, the really loose wrists that are not good on any version of this toy, whether it's drag strip, G2 drag strip Mirage. They're very weak. They don't support weight at all. Uh, the telescoping legs tend to be very uh, shaky and everything. And, and just overall, it's a very poor looking Mirage toy. So I am happy we've gotten a decent follow-up to it and we have something better than this, which, you know, luckily that means I can just leave this guy in his combiner mode with the rest of his team and have them serve that purpose. You know, have your Optimus Maximus for your collection but then also have a really good looking, uh, you know, individual Mirage robot. So luckily, you know, we can do that now. So, you know, final thoughts. This Mirage toy, I think is fantastic. One of the most interesting Siege figures I've seen. Very solid feeling, you know, not too much excessive kibble, except maybe on the backs of his legs, but not that bad. Doesn't get in the way of anything. Uh, again, I'm annoyed that they cheated the transformation, but I can't argue with the, the end product. I think it looks fantastic. His proportions are spot on. Huge improvement over this one. Uh, again, I don't really compare these two as far as which one's better because there's two different takes on the character. Uh, so, yeah, I, I personally think you should pick him up. I think he's a lot of fun. He hits all the right notes for a Mirage toy. Definitely makes me feel better about not owning the original and uh quite a few people that don't because they've never reissued it and if rumors are to be believed it's because they actually lost the mold for that toy so they can't reissue it without making the whole mold from scratch which isn't unheard of but they tend to shy away from that because it's costly 
So yeah, definitely pick this guy up. I think he's fantastic. But what do you think? Feel free to let me know in the comments section if you think he's as good as I say he is, or if you disagree. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new and try to post frequently when my schedule allows. Uh, thank you for joining me for this look at a really just excellent Deluxe Siege figure. I really love this guy. But with all that said, I will see you next time.